I am very pleased to welcome Sonia Marie. She is the founder of Eat Naughty Nice, a health, fitness, and lifestyle coaching practice, helping and educating people on how to heal and nourish their bodies naturally with real food and even recover from chronic illnesses without medication. She specializes in inflammation disease. She's been in practice for 26 years and is a member of the American Associ Association of Drugless Practitioners. She is a certified holistic health coach and certified in personal training, aerobics, and the psychology of eating. She's also the mother of two boys, 27 and 21 years old, and her youngest has Usher type 1C. Thank you very much for joining us on this call today, Sonia, and I will hand it over to you. So as a mom and a health professional, I really do get um, a lot of questions about, you know, do I utilize nutrition with my son? Do I use it myself? You know, what are um, things that we can do to help either slow down the progress or be aware of that our body needs vitamin and mineral wise. And so I'm gonna try to hit as much of that information that I possibly can um, in the 10 keys to healthy eating, but I'm also gonna give you some uh, general information on health because there's just so much misinformation out there about what we should do and what we should eat and um, what things actually do to our body. So I'm gonna try to consistently correlate the two of why we need to do it and how that um, shows up in our body as well as our vision, hearing, those kinds of things. So um, I am going to get started. So I am moving, toggling through these uh, now, so 10 keys to healthy eating and what you're going to learn and what I'm going to share with you today is um, how what we're eating can actually be the one thing that makes you hungry and makes you crave because sugar is a really big um, part of what I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, two, why you might want to take a magnifying glass to the grocery store with you. Um, really important for us to know what's in our labels and our food, um, as well as how to change uh, one common ingredient that um, can help you get control over your energy and help prevent disease in your body, um, and what foods to avoid as well. So, um, because there are certain foods that actually um, hinder. Um, hydration and how our vitamins and minerals um, are received from our body and can aid um, in the progression of, of our vision loss. All right, so key number one, sleep. Yes, we all know we need sleep. Why do we need sleep and why does our parents tell us to go to bed at a certain time? So step number one, sleep. How many hours of sleep you get each night um, is extremely important to our recovery and repair of our cells in our body, of how our body absorbs vitamins and minerals, and how our body resonates with the foods that we're eating. So how much sleep you're getting, extremely important. And um, have you ever noticed that when you are tired, you feel hungrier or you feel more depleted. And research has shown that our appetite increases by 25% when we are tired. This is extremely important when we're not sleeping well and our bodies are registering that we need some energy. So that's when we kind of go to those quick energy fixes like our sugar, our caffeine, and our carbohydrates because our body already knows that that will automatically lift us up and keep us from dragging through the day. So we've kind of taught our body these habits and what to go to food-wise 
um, that I want to show you that you can actually change. So these are important components to know about your health. So there are two hormones, one called leptin and one called ghrelin, that are in our body. Uh, leptin is a hormone that actually tells our body, it says, you know, thank you for feeding me. I'm happy, I'm satisfied, I love you, I'm all good, everything is fine. There's another hormone that is in our body called ghrelin. And ghrelin is pretty angry and grouchy. It's hangry. It says, I'm hungry. I want more. It's very demanding. It feels overwhelmed. It's that fight or flight hormone that stays active, that actually stores body fat in our body, but overutilizes our energy from our food. Um, so what we want to do is we want to keep our hormones balanced. So we want leptin to be in charge. We want to increase leptin. We want to lessen the ghrelin that is making the choices so that um, we feel more empowered. We feel more in charge of our food and we don't feel like our food um, is, you know, we're emotionally eating and attaching to food. We want to be absolutely in charge of our food and we want to be making powerful choices for ourselves with feeling like we have um, motivation and that um, we have some hope there because a lot of our food depletes us in a way where it'll disrupt our sleep, right? So the more leptin we have, um, the better we sleep, the more fluid we get to our retina and the better circulation we have. So we want our brain, we want it to be focusing, we want more fluids to be um, exchanging through our body. So we want more leptin. So you'll hear me talk about leptin a lot. So leptin increases that really deep sleep in our body. All right, so the second important factor here is hydrating. We all know that we need our water, right? We all know that we need to hydrate, but why do we need to hydrate? We need to hydrate because most of us, most Americans, and now the numbers are, they say between 75 and 82% of Americans are chronically dehydrated. If we did one thing, and if you take one thing from this um, webinar that I'm doing today, is that water needs to be the most important thing that you do each and every day. Because the symptoms of dehydration is low energy. That's the first way it's going to show up headaches, muscle cramps, digestive issues, poor circulation, um, illness, and just major hunger where you're constantly needing sugar and carbohydrates for that energy exchange that we're talking about. So in hydrating, this is very important. When you go to sleep at night and you wake up the next morning is the best time to put water in your body. That's the first thing in the morning. If you can add lemon to your water, lukewarm or room temperature water adding, lemon to your water forces oxygen in the body. This starts to normalize our blood sugars. And I'm going to tell you why your blood sugar and your vision is so, so, so important. So your water intake needs to happen. First thing in the morning, you start your body that way. You will instantly start to stimulate your liver. So you're starting to clean out your body from the toxins, from your body sleeping overnight. So when you sleep, your body detoxes your body. It's when your cells recover and repair. That's when they die off and you need the water first thing in the morning to flush your system so that you start a new day. So you're not bringing over your cravings from the day and the night before. It's a really, really um, simple way to help with cravings and normalizing those blood sugars. 
but what's important to you is that you have the right formula of water for you. So this is how that works. If you were a person that weighed 130 pounds, you would divide your weight in half, and that's how many ounces of water you would need a day. So 130 pounds, 64 ounces of water, um, that's what you should be drinking. And when you wake up, if you're gonna get busy through the day, I would pound 16 ounces of water first thing when you wake up, and then for each of your meals, add the rest of your water. So a really good tip is to have some way to measure your water out each and every day, a hydroflask, something that has a certain amount of ounces in it, and you know exactly how many of those you need to get through from morning till an hour before you go to bed um, in your system. Just for you to blink your eyes, to um, have energy, to stay focused, to exercise and to get through your day. Your body, because it's made up of 80 plus percent of water, has to have this, your body formula, half your body weight in ounces per day, just to function properly. It's so, so, so very important. And when we use things like coffee and things uh, put things like alcohol in our body. Coffee and alcohol registers the same caffeine or a soda, right? If you drink sodas, that's caffeine. Per one cup of coffee or alcohol that you drink or one cup of soda, that one cup depletes two ounces of water from your body immediately after you're drinking it. So if you know that and you have your body's formula for every cup of caffeine or every cup of alcohol, you need to add two more cups of water just to be at even, okay? So you can see how we can quickly get severely dehydrated. Um, when we're using the warm water and lemon in the morning, the reason I use warm water or lukewarm water is it actually penetrates your cells faster. It mimics the temperature of your body, especially when you wake up in the morning, your body is pretty warm. You don't wanna be putting cold water in your system. Your body will not absorb it. You'll just be living in the bathroom all day long. So you want to have tap water or lukewarm water when you are drinking to get your water in. I know it's summertime, if you get really, really hot and you need um, to cool yourself off, you can put a couple of uh, pieces of ice in your water, but do not drink a bunch of ice water. Your body is going to actually stop metabolizing your food. It's gonna stop um, to actually try to warm that water. It's too much of a temperature difference to be absorbable in the body, okay? So I'm going to go on to number three. Number three is diet. Do not diet, do not. And the reason why I say, and I'm a nutritionist and I'm telling you not to diet, the reason why I'm saying this is diets don't work. We already know diets don't work. What's important to understand is to stop dieting the old way, the way we used to do things, calorie counting, um, keto, paleo, all, all this. They're just old diets renamed is what they are. And I'm inviting you to actually look at food in a different way. And that's what I want to teach you guys here today. A calorie is not a calorie. A calorie in, a calorie out does not register the same. And I know that used to be, and I've been in the health and wellness world for 26 years now, and that used to be what everyone would tell us to do. And it's what I used to tell my clients to do too, um, until I realized that there is another way. Um, my journey and my health has led me to what I am doing today. Um, and in understanding that, I used to 
diet and I used to exercise in that way. And then I learned nutrition because I had to heal my own body at the age of 25 years old when I was diagnosed with uterine cancer. And I found myself fighting for my life to actually heal my body. And that's when I started to go to school for nutrition. And I still go to school for nutrition because I love learning about it. It's so fascinating um, how bad, how fast the body can recover in exchange and how you can take control over your health by feeding your body the right nutrients. So um, dieting um, is not about depriving yourself um, because that's not sustainable. That's not a lifestyle. That's not enjoyable. And when you start relating diet and the way you eat to something that's not enjoyable, you're never going to continue to do it. So um, it's what I do with my clients. I work with my clients to show them that there is another way and food can be fun. You can have food freedom. You can eat foods you love. You just need to know the ones that are specific for your body type, your blood type. Um, and um, it's, it really is specific to the individual, but the information I'm giving you guys today is general health information that you can apply right here and now, starting today or tomorrow. Okay, so we want food that's gonna absorb into our body. We want liquids that are gonna absorb into our body and move into ourselves. And that's where we're talking about um, how we can actually use it to slow down disease or we can use it to heal our body and just change over in ourselves in a healthier way so that we give our body, body a fighting chance. I'm not saying I have a cure all. I'm saying that eating this way, you can always help. Nutrition is how we change our DNA and our genetics and how we heal and repair cells in a different way from our parents and our grandparents and our ancestors. We can imprint our genes and, and history and, and science show that um, we can make a difference in our body and change ourselves because if not, we wouldn't be able to remove cancer cells from our body if our, if our cells don't turn over and repair and have a new. So there is hope and there is ways that we are absolutely um, able to do this. So um, understanding that there is a lot of hype out there and there's a lot of things that, you know, I just, I love it when I get to see things like this, right? And some of these are forfetched, but some of these do say, yes, the Fruit Loop says now cures cancer and that is me being funny. But you'll do, you'll see cereals and you'll see products that say these things. It says heart healthy, like Cheerios. I think it has a big heart, heart healthy, um, a special K, those kinds of things, right? So products can say whatever they want on the front of a product label. It can say anything. It's called marketing. They allow, FDA allows that, right? We need to be able to understand fact versus fiction, okay? Where they have to tell the truth is when you flip over that um, label and you look on the back of that label and it actually tells you the ingredients and then it'll have in small print all the things, side effects, things that um, aren't so good for us um, in small print because really who goes to the grocery store, stops, turns over the labels and starts to read through it, except for me, <laughs> I do do that. And I teach my clients to do that. but that that is the point when i'm saying um step number four don't believe the hype read research understand what you're putting in your body take the time to know what you're putting in your system we learn everything that we know about nutrition from the radio from magazines from friends from family from whatever people are googling right on um our computers and there's big business out there that are trying to make profit. No research, 
care enough about your health to actually um, read into stuff and to understand. And I know I'm using silliness here when I'm putting this on the front of the labels, but I want you, it's not very far-fetched from what people are able to say out there. And then we see it in the commercials now, right? In our, um, medication. Now there's a five minute long video about a medication's side effects, right? It goes through, you might bleed to death, you might, you know, hemorrhage, you might like all of these um, side effects and you're like, okay, <laughs> if, if I didn't see and hear them say you might die, like, like we're not used to going through those. We feel that if it's on the market and people can have it and people can buy it, it must be safe. Someone did the research out there and it's okay. That is not the truth. They do not do the research out there. Um, they do small research and small um, pools. And I've learned this too from even my Usher syndrome, um, my um, universities that we have funded, that it's whoever's putting more money out there for research. And they do research even in small groups as small as 350 people. And if out of the 350 people, there's less than 10% that have the side effect, then they can put it on the market, okay? Which is why I'm saying that it is important to know what is in your product, okay? So number five, read your labels. Yes, 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 read your labels. Um, and on there, they really um, put a lot of chemicals and now they're starting to break down things when they're putting um, on the back of the labels. The important thing to know is avoid eating anything that has more than five ingredients in it because after that, it's just, it's processed food. It's called refined food. Already pre-digested food resonates as chemicals in the gut lining of our stomach. Then sends signals to our brain telling us it's a chemical doesn't know what to do with it, stores it into our body fat, stores it into our organs as um, toxins, and it stays there. Unless you detox and get it out, it stays there, can stay there for your lifetime. So things to avoid, right? Too many ingredients. It's not a real food, okay? If you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. It's a chemical. Um, if something says low or light, stay away from it. For something to be low fat or light, it's like my biggest pet peeve, fat-free stuff. Don't eat fat-free stuff, low light, skim milk, those kinds of things. If it is light, it means they have to remove the fat out of it, the healthy fat. It's not bad fat. It's the healthy fat out of a natural product. They have to take it out and to actually have taste, they have to then put sugar in its place. So it might be low in light in fats, but it's high in sugar or high in chemicals or high in a combination of chemicals that causes inflammation in the body, okay? Chemicals, preservatives, artificial flavorings, things that say flavor, even if it says natural flavoring, it can come from nature, does not mean it's good for you, okay? So those are key words that you will constantly see. Avoid sugar, high fructose corn syrup being the worst of them all. Um, and know that your ingredients that are in your product that you're buying is listed from the highest order of quantity to the lowest. So your first five ingredients, if sugar is one of the first five ingredients, run, run away really, really fast, okay? So if sugar is one of the last ingredients, you might be in a better position. Or if salt is one of the first five ingredients, that means there's more salt or more sugar in that product than the actual product is telling you is in there, okay? All right, so we're gonna move on to understanding a little bit about these high fructose corn syrup. 
it depletes vitamins and minerals from your body. When you are depleted from the vitamins and minerals in your body, it runs down your immune system, it leads to insulin resistance, diabetes, thyroid problems, um, it increases that ghrelin that I'm talking about. So you're gonna crave more, you're gonna put on more weight as time goes by, you're gonna slow down your metabolism. Artificial sweeteners are carcinogenics. These are horrible. They cause all kind of anxiety, cancer, seizures, headaches, migraines. But most importantly, um, it depletes the vitamins and minerals that our brain and our vision uses, okay? And I'm gonna talk a little bit um, more about that. All right, so in looking um, at these labels and these artificial flavors, MSG is another huge one. This is sodium, but sodium can be broken down on that label in so many different ways. If it doesn't say MSG, it's like 15 other forms of sodium. And things like that can cause, again, itchy skin, dizziness, respiratory issues, ADHD, ADD, Alzheimer's, um, all, these, all these nerve damaging um, things can happen from artificial colorings and flavorings. So be really, really mindful of what is, um, in your products, okay? So number six, getting off the sugar roller coaster. So this is um, something that I everybody knows, yes, we don't want to have a lot of sugar, but um, this is a huge one because a lot of people don't realize when they start their day off with a sweet breakfast or sugary breakfast or cereal or a muffin or something like that, um, that come two or three o'clock, your body's not going to have any more energy left. No one's body's going to have energy left. You're going to be dragging. You're going to be looking for carbohydrates. You're going to be looking to snack. Um, you're going to want to eat more than you would normally be eating at that time. And so I really want you to, uh, you're going to be looking for that late chocolate chip cookie, right? These are all the um, things that happen and then we get this little voice in our head that grilling little voice the devil side you know that other little voice that uh, speaks to us that says I want the sugar sugar is highly 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 addictive okay um, when we put something in our body um, our insulin our pancreas automatically has to match the sugar that we put in and has to surge insulin into our body to match it so we don't go into a sugar coma. So now we're teaching our body to have all of the sugar in to keep our body energized at the level that we're used to having it. So say we have a big bowl of sugary cereal in the morning. I will tell you, Sugary cereal is like giving your kids, and it's not any judgment whatsoever. You know, before I knew all this, I used to do the same thing. It's like giving your kids a big bowl of chocolate chip cookies. Just give them the chocolate chip cookies. They'll enjoy that much more than the cereal um, because the sugar content is the same. And this is where we're starting to teach our bodies to have to overproduce insulin. And then we become, over a period of time, insulin resistant. So then what goes up must come down, right? We go on that sugar roller coaster, and then we crash. And then we have to give ourselves more carbohydrates, more sugar, so we can feel right again. And then we're doing it again each day. And this actually puts, it, it really causes fatigue in our body. It causes adrenal fatigue in our body. It, it causes us to not want to get out of bed in the morning where we're dragging all day and we're just like going through the motions and we're so disconnected from our body and how our body feels that we stop checking in and we start numbing ourselves with food. 
So in talking about, right, this secret killer, sugar, um, Americans actually consume, it says 142 pounds of sugar a year, but children it consume today closer to 62, 162 pounds of sugar in a year's period of time from the foods that are out there that we use today. That's like two sodas a day will give you over 75 grams of sugar. That's 15 teaspoons of sugar in a soda. That's a lot of sugar. And when you think about that, it multiplies. That's how we get to that much sugar in a year. If you're wondering, like, how on earth could I be eating that much sugar? That's how we get there. But the sugar causes high blood pressure. It causes kidney disease. It causes an obstruction of free-flowing blood to our retina. When we are dehydrated and we eat lots of sugar, the first place our body goes is from the highest part of our body, our brain. And literally, there's research that um, Harvard did this paper on research that when someone eats a lot of sugar or a lot of carbohydrates that have the same sugar exchange, bread, um, crackers, rice, um, chips. Literally, the body will go to the retina because it is, it's jelly, lots of fluid there. And actually, sugar causes the pull of fluid to the retina. When you're pulling a liquid away from the retina and you have retinitis pigmentosa, when you have um, age-related um, macular degeneration going on and you're already depleting fluid and blood flow to the retina naturally. Having sugar and carbohydrates that exchange out of sugar are so important to know this about your diet of how to keep that from happening. Because people, and you'll, you'll see this over and over again, people that have diabetes also have bad vision, right? They have floaters, they have clouds, they have, um, they have poor eyesight. And so things, and I posted Time Magazine, to, and, and they did actually quite a few studies, Time Magazine uh, on sugar and how um, deadly it is, but, it also, they found that it's directly related to feeding cancer. Eating sugar, just cancer feeds off of it. And all kinds of other disease, Alzheimer's, uh, dementia, um, get fed by too much sugar in the system. And they did this research and um, found that they tested over 300 mice and they say put white table sugar in one corner in a maze and cocaine in another. And what they found is that all the mice were going back to the white sugar, not to the drug that we thought were, was so addictive, which it is, by all means, it is very addictive. But they found that the mice were going more, more to the white sugar and found that white table sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine was. And the reason why this is important is scientists use this to formulate good tasting food for us. So it's not even our fault that we crave it, it's in all of our food, which is why it's so important to read our labels and know what's in our food, okay? So I'm gonna move on to tip number seven. Tip number seven is how do we, how do we sidestep that? We alkaline our body. We balance the pH levels in our body. And this picture here um, says so much. And I want you to see the beautiful picture, but as well as the color pigmentation. I know you've heard 
um, the saying, you know, eat the rainbow. Why do we need to eat the rainbow? So there's different color pigmentations that actually um, feed our bodies vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients that we need to have healthy vision and healthy cells in our body. And there's two of them. One is called xenoxanthin, and the other one is athoxanthin. And these are phytonutrients along with beta carotenes, right? So we know that carrots are good for vision, right? Well, carrots have orange pigmentation. The xenoxanthin is that orange pigmentation in butternut squash and sweet potatoes in things like saffron um, and all cantaloupe. All of these different kinds of foods, pigmentations actually mean something for vitamins and minerals that get absorbed into our cell. And we need all of them. We need to eat an array of colors. Um, when we're eating foods like this that are non-acidic, you saw the acidic foods, right? All of the um, flavorings and the sugars and the things that deplete uh, MSG, the sodiums that way, um, that deplete and cause acid in our body, the things that cause our bodies to be more alkaline are foods um, that have pigmentation. So each one of them have a job to do. And there's certain vitamins that resonate with keeping our eyesight a little longer, keeping our cell turnover happening, keeping our body and blood circulating properly, bringing food and nutrients to our brain and to our eyes so that we continue to have blood vessels that are working optimally. Um, we want the alkaline foods to do that. So when we do that, we purify toxins from our body. So the green leafy vegetables that we eat um, or should be eating or putting in smoothies um, or having in salads are there for a specific reason. They bring certain vitamins and minerals, but most importantly, they're there as a purifier to remove toxins from our body. So having raw food, Having these green leafy vegetables, having a little side salad or putting a handful of greens in your kid's smoothie in the morning and then putting some beautiful strawberries so they don't see the green <laughs> so that they get the vitamins and minerals in it helps clean toxins from their body and that means cleaning acid from the body. In an alkaline body, disease cannot grow in an alkaline body. We know this from all the years of research. Alkaline body means there's oxygen in the body. An oxygenated, an oxygenated body means the lack of disease. If there's oxygen in your cells, disease can't grow there. Okay, so we want alkaline foods and we want foods that are going to purify our body constantly, cleaning our system out. So like that lemon water that I told you about, Lemon stimulates the liver, cleans toxins out of your organs, and detoxifies that lymphatic system, which is your immune system, to boost your immune system. But it also gets rid of parasites and germs, and um, it helps slow down our aging process. It keeps building our collagen in our skin, in our soft tissue building joints and ligaments and it increases our energy and our longevity. So we want to eat things like oranges and apples and strawberries and blueberries, and we wanna have all those wonderful foods. So these are the alkaline foods versus the acidic foods. Sugar, processed foods, meats, and I'm not, it, I, animal proteins, dairy, alcohol, caffeine, are all acidic foods doesn't mean I'm telling everybody to go vegan. It means if you're going to eat those things, know that you are absolutely, it's so necessary to have the alkaline foods to 
balance those things out. It's all about balance. It's not about restricting and depriving. It's about balance and getting it into your body in the healthiest way possible. Okay. So number eight, tip number eight, I tell my, my clients all the time, eat real food. What is real food? Real food is one ingredient foods. Okay. If it doesn't have a label, eat it. <laughs> it doesn't require a label. That's a one ingredient food. If it's a piece of fish or a piece of chicken or a piece of steak um, and it's almonds and nuts and fruits and berries, then I want you to eat it. This is what's important when we're aligning our bodies with alkaline foods, okay? And what I want to share with you here in the research that I have um, that I've been using with clients, what I've been using um, in our own family, um, with my son, with people that um, are trying to slow down some kind of um, disease, is that there is documentation that it is beneficial for uh, macular degeneration and or P that if we get these vital nutrients, so things like vitamin C, and I'm talking real vitamin C, not ascorbic acid, okay? That's a whole different thing, and I can talk to you guys about vitamins and a great place to get vitamins that actually give you what is supposed to be in a vitamin, not like a little bit of it, and then it's depleted with a bunch of fillers. We need vitamin C from our foods because this aids our blood vessels and it aids in circulation. So our vitamin C is so important for our immune system. We get it in our bell peppers. We get it in strawberries and cantaloupes, our citrus fruits, tomatoes, all of those kinds of things. But we also need things like our vitamin E. This is so important. These are all vitamins that I'm talking to you about that aid in eye health, okay? Vitamin E is another one because it's, um, it helps with building a healthy cell membrane. It helps, vitamin E helps in our DNA repair, um, in our immune support. And you find vitamin E in our nuts, in our seeds, um, pumpkin, asparagus, um, our nut butters, things like swordfish, right? You can find vitamin E um, in. Zinc is another one that's so very important for eye health. Um, it's, you can find that in like shellfish. If you are allergic to shellfish and you can't have it, our whole grains have zinc in it. Our um, almond milks, our coconut milk, you can find it in those non-dairy foods. Um, I know everyone has heard that vitamin A is extremely efficient for eye health, and that's kind of the only vitamin that anybody talks about when they're talking about eye health is, you know, vitamin A. And the reason why um, in our industry of uh, low vision, they talk about Vitamin A, vitamin A injections, is it good, is it bad, too much is bad, you know, is because in eye health, um, the deficiency is vitamin A, like there's no vitamin A um, in an Usher syndrome person's body. Um, they have very, their body holds on to very little of it or it makes very little of it, and it is correlated with night blindness. And the reason why this is important is um, it comes, vitamin A derives from um, animal-based uh, food. So like dairy, um, eggs, our milk, our cheese, liver, um, our animal proteins, this is where we find our vitamin A. And, you know, our parents ate a lot of liver and onions, but I mean, today, trying to get our kids to eat liver, are you kidding me? I don't even enjoy <laughs> eating liver. So um, those, those meat organs that our ancestors ate, that they weren't deficient in these um, things. But 
Vitamin A can also come from plant-based. The body actually can convert um, vitamin A out of plant-derived food, so you don't have to always find it in that way. So another vitamin that's extremely important is our omega-3s. Um, omega-3s reduce inflammation. This is so important for our brain health and focus and so important for our vision. Everything that is good for our brain and our heart is good for our vision. So if you know foods already, like walnuts that are good for your brain and your heart, those are good for your vision as well. Okay, same organ um, repairing uh, foods. Okay, so um, it reduces inflammation, but omega 3s are also important for tear production in your eyes for those fluids that you need um, for your eye health. So um, it also helps with producing this like thin, oily layer on the outer layer of our eye that protects our eye in general. Um, another vitamin is that lutein that we were talking about, right? So that good hormone that we need in our body, and these come, that comes from egg yolks. So if you're one of those people that just eat egg whites, stop doing that. Everybody's so concerned about the egg yolk and, and cholesterol. That's not the problem. The problem is bad sodium salts from processed foods and bad fats. So even my clients that have high cholesterol, I put egg yolks right back in, salmon right back in, avocado right back in, and eliminate all those processed foods and their cholesterol goes down. So just having the right information, so, so, so very important. Gluten is also found in the dark leafy greens and broccoli and asparagus, those kinds of things, Brussels sprouts, carrots, um, peas, great source of port, uh, protein as well um, for our body. And this is a, a vitamin most people won't kind of talk about it so much, is uh, the vitamin of copper, the mineral of copper that we need from our body. And we do get that from shellfish, but we also get that from grains and our beans, nuts, potatoes, again from organ meats, which not a lot of people eat, um, dried fruits, and from natural yeast. So um, in making sure that we keep all of these wonderful healthy foods in, which is the step nine that I just went over, um, I, I really hope that um, some of these foods resonate with you and, and help you understand that color pigmentation is so important. So when we're eating our foods, have fruit. I, people are so scared of fruit now. Am I eating too much fruit calorie wise? No, eat the fruit. Eat the fruit before you eat something else. Drink your water. If you're hungry and you're craving things, drink water first. You're probably just dehydrated. This does a world of good for our body, but know that our red and our yellow, orange, green foods are the foods that have most of the vitamins and minerals and the gluten foods um, that we need to increase our vision health. Um, look for those pigmentations, so, so, so very important. So last but not least, tip number 10 is that all of the foods that are really, really good and healthy for our brain are good and healthy for our eyes. That's extremely important to correlate the two when you're looking at nutrition and how you're going to stay on top of um, vision progression loss. So the good news is that when we stay on top of our research and we stay on top of our nutrition information, we can feel more empowered. There's more hope there. There's more understanding. We have a driving force of why we want to eat healthy in a healthy way. I know it's really difficult, especially um, as parents, to get our kids to eat healthy. 
but having them understand the levels that they can take control over their own nutrition, that it will make a difference, um, is always extremely important. So the new research that is out there that we can share with our loved ones to give them this hope and understanding the correlation of nutrition um, information is out there. Dr. Elizabeth Johnson um, has a PhD from Tuff University. She did a research, um, a five-year research study of age-related macular degeneration. And in the findings, she found that antioxidants the foods that have color pigmentation that we were talking about, that orange and yellow um, and red pigmentation, those foods actually, she found that hydration and the oxygen that's being forced into the cells and into the body actually help delay the progression of the late stages of age-related macular degeneration. When I heard and saw this, I was so excited because it actually did. It, it gave me so much hope as a mom and as a health professional to, to really under, help people understand that nutrition is such a powerful driving force of how we can help ourselves because it does help um, with those copies, right? Those copies of our genes that we keep replenishing each and every day and that we've had passed down through generations. We give, right, our children either good or bad copies of those genes and we can imprint them and we can start changing them on a DNA level. And we can do this by feeding our bodies proper food. So teaching our little ones that they can take control over their health in these ways and finding ways to do that, finding their favorite foods, finding ways to sneak those snacks in and have them look at nutrition from a whole different idea and view. With my clients, I use this tactic of emptying your cup, right? Emptying your cup of the knowledge or the behavior habits of diet and nutrition that we had before and looking at it from a whole different side. What foods do I need for my body? How can I get it in in a healthier way so that I can feed my body on a cellular level to do the best I can with the nutrition knowledge that I have is my important message to you today. There is another doctor um, there's actually the School of Medicine from University of uh, Virginia that were showing how these isoforms, these proteins in our gene, they found for Usher's one, that he found the research in the proteins that develop the hair follicles in the cochlea for hearing that there is these proteins that can be fed um, in a certain way to help develop these sensors. And they're in the beginning stages. And what is essential for everyone to know is it's their correlation that they found. And they're in the very early stages. They're probably five to six years out. But what they found and what was so exciting is those same isoform proteins that are used to develop and grow in their models that they're using, they're the same isoform proteins that actually um, are, the, are the cells that feed our sensors, our eye sensors, the light sensors in our eyes. They're the same isoform um, proteins, which is amazing. For Usher's 1C, which is what my son has, um, they haven't had much research that correlates, correlates the hearing and the vision. And in seeing this, that are, there are those same mutated proteins that can be mimicked. It's really, really exciting news um, to, to know and understand that they're going down a path of um, 
that maybe something in the very near future can be developed to help both at the same time. This is just profound, amazing news um, for, I think, for ushers in general. So I hope that you enjoyed your, your, your health seminar today on um, nutrition and um, maybe just a new way to look at food and, and how we feed our body each and every day on a cellular level. There's so much we can do, and, and that's what I'm here for. If you want to reach out to me, I'm here to answer your questions. Here is my website, my email, my personal email, and also that link to the vitamins that are so essential and important when we're not able to get in the things that we need from our food or we can't get our kids to eat all the vitamins and nutrients from raw food that we need them to get um, with their vegetables and their fruit. Um, this is definitely another way and I invite you if you you have questions on that, I can help you in, in navigating you through the vitamins as well. Um, but I am here to help and um, I invite you to reach out to me and thank you so much for having me on today and letting me share what I am so passionate about. Thank you so much.